My name is Dr. Tom Brannigan. Uh, I'd like to do an examination of the uh, part of your brain today, if that's all right. Okay, doctor. Uh, what's your name? Uh, I'm Luke. Luke, okay. So Luke, I'll be checking your, your cerebellum. So there's a few tests that we do, but first I'd like to just go to the end of the bed and have a look at you, if that's all right. Sure. Remember that signs of cerebellar disease manifest on the same side as the cerebellar lesion. First, remember the general observations that apply to any system. Apply these specifically to the neurological exams. Additional observations that are specific to the neurological examination can be summarized with the mnemonic cashier. C is for consciousness level. Is it normal or reduced? Use the Glasgow Coma Scale to report consciousness in a consistent way. A is for asymmetry. Look for symmetry of posture, facial muscles, any spasticity and muscle wasting. The patient can be symmetrically affected so the presence of symmetry does not outrule any problems. S is for scars. Look particularly for neurosurgical and traumatic scars, but mention any that are visible. H is for hearing aids. I is for involuntary movements. E is for equipment, such as mobility aids, wheelchairs and assistive devices. R is for a rash. Comment on any visible rashes. The signs of cerebellar disease can be summarised with the mnemonic Danish pastry. D for dystiatocokinesis. A for ataxia, N for nystagmus, I for intention tremor, S for slurred speech, H for hypotonia, P for past pointing, T for tremor, and R for rebound. In practice, it is more efficient to test these in a different order, starting with the hands. Okay, so a lot of these little tests that I do, they involve the arms. So the first thing I want you to do is if you could put your arms out like this, with your palms facing the ceiling. Okay, and just straighten your fingers out. Right. And could you shut your eyes then, please? Okay, you can open your eyes again. Uh, I'm just gonna take your hands one time. You can put that one Tone down. is passive resistant to movement. Take the patient's hand as if shaking it. Tell them to relax their arm fully. Now move their hand, forearm and upper arm passively through the range of motion of the joints including pronation and supination. Compare the left and right limbs. Okay, that's great. So for the next bit, I'll get you to uh, put this finger, the index finger onto your nose. Just touch your nose and then touch my finger. Stand facing the patient and hold your finger at the limit of their reach. Move your finger between each touch. Repeat the process four to five times with the patient's eyes open and then once with the eyes closed. Do not move your finger once the patient closes their eyes. Intention tremor is when the patient develops a tremor as their finger approaches your finger. Pass pointing is when the patient's finger misses your finger and moves beyond it. They will often immediately correct their error using their vision and touch to move their finger back to yours. The next thing is using this hand, uh, try and slap it onto the, or the back of this hand onto the, onto the panel of that. Okay, and then. Next test for the ability to perform rapidly alternating movements. Failure to do this is called dystiadecokinesis which is a sign of ipsilateral cerebellar disease. That's fast. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, and uh, now I guess you just put your arms out like this. Um, I'm going to push down your hands. Uh, I want you Next, test for rebound. If the patient's arms shoot up above the original position and on upwards, this is called rebound. Look for an essential tremor. For the next thing then, uh, without moving your head, so just keep your head perfectly still, I want you to look at my finger. I'm going to move my finger around a bit, so you just follow it with your eyes. Cerebellar nystagmus is a jerky horizontal nystagmus with increased amplitude towards the side of the lesion. Hold your finger in front of the patient and ask them to look at it without moving their head. Move it out to the far left, then the far right, and from a central position move it up and down. If nystagmus is noted, comment on when it occurs the direction of movement and movement rapidity. By this point, slurred speech would already have been noticed. To formally assess it, ask the patient to repeat certain phrases after you. West Register Street. Okay, perfect. So the final thing I'll get you to do is... Gate ataxia is screened for by asking the patient to walk across the room, turn around and come back towards you. Use whatever space you have. Observe the gait for steadiness, stride length, stride width, arm swing and clumsiness. An ataxic gait is one where the patient walks with feet wide apart. Where a patient veers to one side, it can be due to cerebellar dysfunction on the side to which they are veering. Okay. 
for the last thing then I'll just put your two feet together. And uh, I'm going to put my arms here just in case you start to lose your balance. And now I'd like you to close your eyes. This is Romberg's test and can have a few different endpoints. A patient with truncal ataxia will have a tendency to fall backwards due to a midline cerebellar lesion. Inability to stand with feet together, regardless of whether eyes are open or closed, is due to cerebellar or vestibular dysfunction. With eyes closed, a small amount of sway is normal. If the patient sways to the point of falling over, this suggests abnormal proprioception is causing a sensory ataxia. Okay, Luke, that's everything. Thanks very much. Thank you, Doctor. Thanks, fine.